everyone. Good morning. Happy Monday. It's another week. Another week in the books and another week to get started today. So I'm excited that you're here and we are going to jump right in. So it is the last Monday of January 2021 already. That is crazy, right? We are already through the first month. And um, last week we talked about the intentions you have for this year, the intentions you have behind your goals and um, the discipline and the habits that we need in order to get there. And so today I would like to kind of piggyback on that and give you another resource. That's, you know, one of the things that I'm really intentional about is just putting resources in your hands and giving you options and tools to help you, you know, with your goals and personal growth. And so um, I'm gonna uh, reference a book today. And the book is The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John Maxwell. It's one of my favorite John Maxwell books. Um, and by the way, uh, John is a really um, key person in, in my career development. I consider him a mentor. I've had the pleasure of hearing him speak several times live and I've met him um, once and had a conversation with him. He signed one of his books, which was really great. And um, I am also a John Maxwell certified leadership trainer. I went through his, his program last year. Um, so anyway, I, I do have, um, I use a lot of his resources myself. I teach from it um, and coach from it. And I wanted to talk to you about this book today. This is a great book. It's an easy read. Um, you can see my book is highlighted and written in and uh, it's sat on my desk for a couple of years, actually. And so in this book, John challenges us to live up to our potential. And he really explains how to do it. And he teaches us that in order to live up to our fullest potential, we have to be willing to grow. And I know to us on a logical sense that, that we, can, we wouldn't push back on that. Of course, we have to grow. The thing is though, as I've said before, and as I've uh, shared with you here on Mojo, growth is not intentional, excuse me, growth is not gonna happen by itself, it has to be intentional. Uh, it's not just gonna you know, happen because there's time on a task or time is passing, growth has to be intentional. And so in the very first chapter of the book, that's what John talks about is the law of intentionality. And he um, shares with us that in order to reach our goals, we have to really get clear and specific about what they are. Uh, we need to grow and that requires a plan. So as always, I invite you to take notes. So that may be something to write down. Growth is intentional and growth is necessary to get to my goals. And in order to get to my goals, I need a plan. And, and the planning, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. And the planning is so essential because I think a lot of us, you know, we were raised with certain values. We were raised with certain work ethics, whether we realize it or not. Uh, sometimes it's what we see and learn from our parents and people around us. And I know that there was a lot of, of value put behind working hard. And I completely understand that, but here's the thing. Working hard alone will not get you where you want to be. It's working smarter. It's working efficiently and it's working through strategies. So you may want to write that word down, strategy. Um, so, so working hard itself uh, is not going to guarantee success. And speaking of strategy, I just want to say too, hope is not a strategy. <laughs> This is not about putting some intention out there and say, okay, I hope it works. It's really about getting clear and breaking down how to get there. It's the activities that will get you there. And I think that most people are anxious or excited somewhere in between to improve their circumstances, right? How many of you would like to improve your circumstances in 2021? Of course. Here's the question though. How many of us are really willing to do what it takes? to change our circumstances? And how many of us are willing to improve ourselves in the process? Because your goals and your business, all those things will only grow to the extent that you do. So I think that you know there has to come a time and there's no better time than right now when we stop waiting to become the person we need to be. When we also stop saying things like, 
one day and someday and make it today. So as I, I trust that you have your goals planned out for your career or business, for your personal goals, um, in doing that, have you really gotten clear about how you need to grow as a person in order to get there, right? Who do you need to become in the process of getting to your goals? And so we're, you know, we just have to take ownership. We have to take ownership to the growth that we need to experience. We have to take ownership um, to the process itself. We have to take ownership to the process of growth because no one's going to do it for us. You cannot pay someone else to do your sit-ups for you. I know, I know, Michelle, I see you. I know, unfortunately, I mean, I could, I could pay someone to work out for me, right? Who's going to benefit from that? Not me, right? It's not going to change my health or my body. So we really have to understand that. We have to really, you know, take ownership to that. So in each chapter of this book, the 15, if you're just joining us, the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth, uh, John talks about kind of unpacks uh, a different, what he, he likes to call things a law uh, and different, how to apply these laws in your life. And so I'm just gonna run through the chapters for you, but we're gonna dive into one uh, specific chapter today. Uh, so if you would like to jot these down, this might inspire you to pick up the book. And uh, in the first chapter, John talks about the law of intentionality. In chapter two, he talks about the law of awareness, which is really um, knowing uh, yourself in order to grow yourself, right? We must know ourselves in order to grow ourselves, the law of awareness. Chapter three, he talks about the law of the mirror. You must see value in yourself in order to grow. Chapter four is the law of reflection, learning to pause and let the learning catch up with you. The law of reflection, learning to pause and let the learning catch up with you. Chapter five is the law of discipline. We talked a little bit about that last week. Um, and to let the learn, excuse me, uh, the law of discipline, motivation gets you going but discipline keeps you going. Motivation gets you going, but discipline is what builds the consistency in the habits that will keep getting you on, you know, keep helping you see results and keep you on track. Chapter six is the law of environment, the law of environment, which is basically, he talks in that chapter about growth will thrive in the right environment. And, and I'll just say, we might do a mojo on that one week. Your environment is so important to your success, okay? Right down to the lighting in the room and the temperature in the room and how you build a bunker and protect yourself from distractions. People are a part of your environment, right? So this is a, this is a key part of your success path. Um, so chapter seven, he talks about the law of design which is all about developing strategies. Chapter eight is the law of pain. <laughs> the law of pain. Pain is a key element in success as well, right? Because as human beings, we are, we are unfortunately not naturally wired to move toward pleasure. We are naturally wired to move away from pain, right? So in all the things that you're doing, your strategies, your personal strategies, it's usually to move away from pain. But the thing is, high achievers know that we have to work through the pain because the things that we least want to do are probably those activities that will get us further, right, towards our goals. And so John talks about how we can manage uh, sometimes and understand from our bad experiences how to develop better strategies for growth, right? So that's what that chapter is about. Chapter nine is the law of the ladder, which just basically says, you know, it talks about the intentionality behind personal growth and talks about how you grow and the height that you grow personally will determine success and everything else in your life. Chapter 10 is the law of the rubber band, which is growth stops. This is really an important concept. Growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. So when you stop feeling the pressure or the pain of wanting to move forward, growth will stop. 
So in, in your awareness of knowing where you are right now and where you want to be, how much tension can you put in between so that you're motivated, inspired, and strategic about bridging the gap, right? So that's a key concept. Chapter 11, the law of trade-offs. Uh, knowing that we, there are going to be things we have to give up. Knowing that there are things we have to give up in our uh, process and in our journey of success. Uh, and, and most of those bad habits that are holding us back. Chapter 12 is the law of curiosity and growth is stimulated by the questions we ask, especially the ones that start with why or how. And chapter 13 is the law of modeling um, because it's hard to improve yourself if the only one that you're following is you, right? If, if you're only using your own knowledge and experience are you really growing? And chapter 14 is the law of expansion because growth will always increase your own capacity. And chapter 15 is the law of contribution. Growing um, yourself enables you to grow other people, which is also a key part of, of my motivation for what I do. So those are the chapters in the book, um, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John Maxwell. I invite you to get a copy. This morning, we're gonna dig into um, the law of reflection. That's what we're going to talk about today. So let's unpack that. Um, I know that, you know, we're experiencing things every day throughout the day. And there are some kinds of growth that come to us only if we are willing to stop long enough to allow us to know or receive the lesson from the experience, right? And I think that this is really important for us to really look at, especially early on in this year. And, and if you're taking notes, write this down. There is power in pausing. There is power in pausing. And for the growth-minded individual, um, pausing is like hitting a refresh button, right? It's like, you know, hitting recharge. Now, here's the other thing that's true for, um, you know, high achievers and growth-minded individuals. Pausing is is difficult sometimes. For some of us, we feel it's almost counterintuitive or we try to tell ourselves that, you know, I can't take time to sit and just think. I just have to keep doing. Well, I'm here to tell you, my friends, that in order for you to be effective in the doing, you must take the time to be thinking and planning and reflecting because there are so many lessons to pull from all of your interactions and experiences throughout the day and those lessons and strategies can not only help you do it more effectively or, or better, but perhaps faster, more efficient. Um, and so it's really important, this concept of the law of reflection. And so um, I think that reflection can turn our experiences into insight, right? Those aha moments. That's why when I teach a class or do the mojo, um, I always ask what anybody have any thoughts or questions, right? I want to give you an opportunity for reflection. And I realized when I was putting this together, how really important this concept is in my own life. I reflect all the time. Now, what we're going to talk about today is making this a habit, almost really a ritual. And of course, you know, you can be thinking and reflecting throughout the day, you know, maybe in the car or, what, or you know, wherever you might be. But what I want to share with you is what John talks about in the book, which is really creating time and space for this and making it habitual. And, you know, whether it's with a journal and a pen or your laptop or whatever, you know, taking down notes. So this is really a process we're talking about today as a process. Um, because I think that, you know, we, we have to stop long enough to understand what's happening around us. We have to stop long enough for us to take the learning because we're moving faster than the speed of light, right? Every day, <laughs> we're just going through our day. We, we have an agenda, we have goals and life is, is fast paced. I mean, it just, it is. And so if we're not taking those little timeouts to say, okay, what just happened around me? What can I learn from this? What can I do differently? I'll share some questions with you before the end of, of the session this morning that you can ask. Um, then what are we missing out on? You know, what are we really missing out on that, again, could help us do it better, faster, smarter, easier uh, in the future? And so, again, these innumerable experiences that we have, 
if we're not learning something from it, um, then, you know, are we really using our time the best way we can, right? And again, because growth is not just by osmosis, we have to be intentional about it. So when we have this reflection time, based on the questions we ask ourselves, that's where the data can kind of be downloaded and really, you know, give us, I think, those strategic options. So when we do this, it means, again, pausing with intention, right? Like I said, it's having that time and space um, and probably in a quiet place where you're not going to be distracted so that you can reflect but sort out some, some things and, again, jot them down. Um, and again, this pausing is not about like stopping to smell the roses. This is strategic thinking. So again, for any of you who are fast paced, high achievers, uh, who may even be having a little reaction to this going, I don't have time. Anna, I don't have time to sit in a chair and think about my day. I'm gonna encourage you this morning to really make the time because again, the information that you're able to download from it, and I'll give you a couple of questions you can ask yourself at the end of every day to zero in. And here's the other thing too. This is not about wasting time. This is about taking the time to analyze, right? So write that down. I'm going to analyze my day. And this process should take no less than 10 minutes. You have to give enough time to get the information you're, you're looking for. No less than 10 minutes and no more than 30. That's it. So I just want to put that out there up front too that you're going to time block 30 minutes a day for this and that's it. We're not going to spend an hour. We're not meditating. That's something that that's, you know, an activity you can do in another time during the day too. But this particular purpose of this exercise is to reflect on our day, to come out with the ahas, the lessons, the key things that went on that you need to really learn from and utilize for a future opportunity, right? So we can't feel guilty about doing this. Um, and here are some of the questions that I want you to jot down that you can ask yourself. So these questions I'm going to give you, I think I have five of them I wrote down from John's book. Yeah, five questions that I'm going to give you that are good daily questions. So if you want to put this process in daily, here are your five questions. What was the winning outcome today and why? So if you could reflect on the one thing that happened today that you were winning or was a success, reflect on that and ask yourself, why was it successful? Think about all the things you'll learn from asking that question, right? Because success is, is sequential, right? It builds on itself and it's duplicatable. <laughs> so this is something you want to ask yourself so you can duplicate it. Success is duplicatable. Okay, number two. What could I have done differently? What could I have done differently? I want you to ask yourself this question using logic, not emotion. Make that note in your, in your notes, right? This is not about blaming. This is not about, you know, like beating yourself up. This is just really a, a logical question. What could I have done differently? And there's opportunity in that, right? Number three, and of course, this is only going to work if you ask yourself the questions and you're honest with the answers. Number three, did I use my time wisely today? Did I use my time wisely today? You may want to have a part two to that question. What got, you know, what tripped me up or, or what got in my way? And, and if you do ask that question, I'm going to challenge you to put, peel the onion back, go a little deeper, because, you know, I would say an initial response, a common response for most people is you're going to start naming all the people or things that interrupted them or distracted them, right? But at the end of the day, whose choice is it to allow that to happen? Number four. Who are the people I learned something from today? I love this question. It could be someone you had a quick conversation with. It could have been on an appointment. It could have been a podcast, right? I hope it's on Monday Morning Mojo once in a while. But who are the people I learned something from today? What was it and how will I use it? Who are the people I learned something from today? What was it? How will I use it? 
And number five, who did I add value to today? Did you change someone's life even in a little, in a small way? Who did I add value to today? Love that question. Because if you're uh, serious about being a leader, that's your goal every day is to add value. So again, no more than, no less than 10 minutes, no more than 30. So it's about moving through these questions with efficiency. You want to get the information, you want to download it, uh, but it's about creating that urgency around really, really thinking and coming, coming uh, up with some solutions there or answers. Now, I'm going to give you some additional questions that you can also use. So, so this is about having time to daily reflect, right? So putting on 30 minutes on your calendar at the end of the day. Um, and if I would suggest you do it before you go on to family time, right? Because you need to have that, that, that boundary too. So maybe it's the very last work activity of the day. Um, and then, you know, or it's the last thing you do before you go to bed. That might be another time to do it. Those are my suggestions. Uh, you do what works for you, but those are my, suge my suggestions. Now, you may want to put in additional reflection time, and you should. So let's say you want to put in some time. You know, I know I've heard John talk about this, um, where he does, um, like, every month, he'll, have a, a, he'll give himself a little more time to expand into other questions uh, and put another 30 minutes on his calendar for reflection on the questions I'm going to give you now. Maybe it's something you do quarterly. Maybe it's a mid-year check-in, whatever. But these are some extra questions uh, that might be more than just your daily recap. Um, and, uh, and this might be a great way to start right now, too. So number one, what is my greatest strength? What is my greatest strength or asset? What is my greatest strength or asset? So this is giving you an opportunity to reflect on on some things about your, your toolbox, right? And then number two, what is my greatest weakness or liability? And understanding our strengths and weaknesses is really an opportunity to master ourselves. And that's gonna be a key part of, of getting where we need to be. And so that personal growth, that awareness is really important. So number three, what do I value most? I love taking time to ask myself these questions because we do hold on to values, right? We do hold on to these beliefs, but do we take the time to really get clear about it, articulate it, put it in our journal, like, you know, really bring it up to the surface? What do I value most? Um, number four, when it comes to achieving my goals, what is my best habit? When it comes to achieving my goals, what is my best habit? Conversely, the next question you know is coming is, what is my worst habit? What habit is not serving me right now? It could be in your career, it could be in your personal life, your relationships. What is really not serving you right now? What is not a good habit? And sometimes identifying that, right? So in other words, maybe the habit your worst habit is not stopping you dead in your tracks, but if you were to remove it, change it, it would it help you move forward faster, easier, more efficiently, right? This is a great question, number six. What is most fulfilling to me? What is most fulfilling to me? And I'll say another like 6B, Am I bringing that in my life enough, right? So the things that really bring you joy, once you identify them, are you, are you creating an opportunity to call it in? Number seven, what am I doing daily to grow? Number seven, what am I doing daily to grow? So I'll just say too, if um, you're inspired to journal, some people struggle with what to write about. Well, so it could be guided, right? You could do some guided writing and any of these questions can start your journal page for you, right? 
And so really, these are some great questions I would ask you as your coach. So this is your opportunity to coach yourself too. Number eight, who in my life do I need to show gratitude to? Who in my life do I need to show gratitude to? Some of these questions might become what you put on an index card in front of where you work most often, right? So that it's just a daily reminder even. Okay, number nine, what are the roadblocks that keep getting in my way? So similar to identifying habits and weaknesses, Right, this is a, a similar question in another form. Uh, what are the roadblocks that keep getting in my way? And then the last question I have for you today uh, is where do I need a breakthrough right now? Where do I need a breakthrough right now? So in a previous mojo, I've talked about the E to P model. I think that there is an illustration of it in the files on the mojo page. And we talked about how we can do uh, what comes naturally to us. And for a while that helps us succeed until we hit that ceiling of achievement, right? And in order to break through to the next level, we need to find a way to do things more purposefully, right? Which is a lot of what we talk about here on Mojo. It's a lot about intention, purpose, and strategy if you really break it down. And um, so in, in this last question, where do you need a breakthrough like that? Like in what area of your career specifically or in your personal life do you need a breakthrough? So I think those are great questions. Hopefully you do too. I can put these questions on the Mojo page for you guys too. Now look, I also know this might even sound like a lot of work to somebody and definitely it's a lot of effort, right? Here's the thing. I think, and, and honestly, that's why a lot of people don't do this, right? Because it does take effort and it does take time. But it's worth it, guys, because as you continue to put time into yourself and developing your greatest asset, which is you, then you will find that you continue to get closer and closer and closer to your full potential. And that is what personal growth is about at the end of the day. Personal growth is not just about filling your bookshelf and, and journals and, and, and spending all this time you know, listening to people and learning from people, what good is it if you don't use it? What good is it if you don't take the time to reflect on what you're hearing? So that's why this is so important and so worth it. Um, because again, the purpose of personal growth is to help you get to really expand and finally get to your full potential. And that's really what's going to give you the life you dream about. That's what, and as I said last week, this is kind of my new mantra this year. Uh, desire alone is not going to get you the life you dream about. The discipline will, the strategies will, the goals will. Um, and that's why, you know, when, when we talk about asking these questions, it opens up your thought process. And if you're having a conversation with someone, the power of your questions can open up that communication uh, beyond what you can imagine. So I want to encourage you to continue to find ways to keep growing every single day. And to apply the law of reflection, again, the book that we're talking about is the 15 uh, Invaluable Laws of Growth. You, I definitely recommend you get this book and, and it's easy to apply uh, the lessons if you take the time to do that. But today I just wanted to talk about the law of reflection because I think that is so important. So how do you apply to, to start closing this up this morning? How do you apply the law of reflection again? First thing I want you to think about is where will you have that time? Where? I want you to figure out how to create a space, right? An environment that will support this. And John recommends it's the same space every day, right? Because we want to build habits. So I have a chair in my office, if I can show you. That's my reflection spot. That's my reading spot, right? So that's where I sit. Now, you find that comfortable spot. And then the next thing, of course, is you have to schedule time. Now, I just want to say something about this. When I say schedule time, it means time blocking. And it means it goes on your calendar, just like anything else. Because if it's not on your calendar, it probably won't happen. So it's really about making this appointment with yourself, whatever you think is the right time of day. Um, and remember, no less than 10 minutes and no more than 30. 
you want to get really laser focused with the questions and what you're going to learn. And it's okay if you ask yourself the same three or five questions, the first ones I gave you every day. I think those are powerful questions. So I, uh, I'm going to encourage you to put this into practice. I would love to hear through you um, on the Facebook page. I would love to continue to see the, the page grow and have it be that community. So anytime that you hear something in Mojo and apply it, share your results because you have the power to inspire and encourage other people. And that's where this community really starts to have a ripple effect. So, you know, whatever, you know, if you, you have that thinking time on your calendar and that reflection time and you start to see the great results from it, talk about it, share it on the Mojo page. Um, as I always like to do, just give everyone a second. Are there any comments or ahas or questions from anybody? Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. Hi, Anna. <clears throat> um, I like the idea of time boxing, and I'm glad you covered it at the end. I wasn't quite sure if you meant actually put it on your calendar or, yeah. you know, because when I'm thinking about going to bed and doing this right before bed, I wouldn't think to write it down on my calendar, but um, it's a really good point about if you write it down and make that time space, maybe you'll, even if the first few times you just sit there and think mm -hmm. about how you want to approach it, but making that time every day to do it. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Make an appointment with yourself, get it on the calendar and remember what I said about environment. So if you feel the right time to do this is before bed, make sure that you support yourself and have the environment with a little structure, right? So have a journal and a pen at, at, on the nightstand or, or your iPad, whatever you like to use to take notes. Um, and maybe you share with your partner that, you know, this is going to be like your first 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and you're going to go in and do something for yourself before he comes in or she comes in or whatever. You know, so just make sure that you're protecting the time and that you are building the right environment so that it, the process works. So Robin White has in the chat, uh, yes, I will put these on the page. Uh, feels like this was a message you needed to hear this morning, Robin. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, anyone else have any, any comments or thoughts? Okay, so just wanted to remind everyone of a, of a couple quick things, and I appreciate you being here this morning. Number one, um, if you find value in Monday Morning Mojo every Monday and all the information and content that's shared on our Facebook page, um, please share this with other people. I do get questions about the videos and how to share them. So I upload every Monday Morning Mojo to my YouTube channel. And I usually share that again throughout the week as a, a replay if someone didn't see it this morning here, like live on Facebook and on Zoom. Um, so you want to share the YouTube video because that has a URL. So um, when you see the YouTube video show up on the page, that's what's shareable if you if you open up the video. Or you just can go right to YouTube. And uh, my channel is Anna Gibbs. And if you go to YouTube and subscribe to the channel, then every time I upload something, you'll get a little notification and then you can decide if it's something you want to watch or share or whatever. Um, and of course, we want to continue to grow the Facebook page. So if you find value, if you find that this has, you know, continues to help you or it changes your world in some way, then please share the page, the Facebook page with other people, invite them to also be a part of the group. So I would love your help in growing the community. And then the last thing I just want to say is I put a post out yesterday morning um, as a coach, um, my, my, uh, number one thing is wanting to support and help people get what they want most. And so I am opening up my calendar. I have um, room to coach a few people. Um, and if you would like to find out more about what coaching can do for you, what it would look like to hire me as your coach, what the investment is, all of that, um, then send me an email to Anna underscore Gibbs at Ymail, or you can reach out to me through the Facebook page. And I'm offering this week a free 60 minute session where I can help you kind of get clear about what your goals are and what you want to do. And then we can talk a little bit about what coaching might look like. Um, so I want to invite you to take advantage of that. Um, again, I only have a room, room for probably a handful of people. So I've already had several people reach out. So if this is something that you would like to do for yourself, take action today and reach out to me and I'd love to chat with you. So thank you for being here every week. I'm going to let you go because I know we're a little over time. So have an awesome week. Look for some of this content on the Facebook page and uh, I'll talk to you next week.
Hi, Anna. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good day. You too.